Namaste, a very warm welcome to the Vedic Astrology Masterclass series. I'm Ms. Rishti and I will be your host for the session. Today's Masterclass will be given by Dr. Nemani Venkata Raghunatha Raoji, who will be teaching us about spiritual transformation secrets. Dr. Nemani is from Parvatipuram in Andhra Pradesh, India and lives in San Francisco, USA. He got his PhD in business management from USA and is currently working there as a director of data analytics and artificial intelligence for a major consulting company. He has been practicing Vedic astrology since 2002 and is a Jyotish student of Sri H. Ramadas Rao, Pandit Sanjay Rath, Pandit Dakshinamurti Ramaswamy, Swami Omkarji, and Sri Madhu Babu Prakya. Dr. Nimani has received Jyotish Acharya and Jyotish Chaitanya from Pranava Peetham in Coimbatore, India, and he has also received the Jyotish Visharada from the Council of Vedic Astrology, USA. He has authored over 60 Jyotish articles and published in reputed astrology magazines, and he has also authored four astrology books. He is a passionate Vedic astrologer who aims to combine traditional Vedic astrology from Parashara, Jayamini, Varaha, Mihira, Nakshatra, Nadi, Panchapakshi, and various Prashna or Horari method principles with modern scientific evaluation and validation methods. <coughs> Today, Dr. Nemani will be sharing his research, findings, and observations on the topic titled Spiritual Transformation Secrets. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Nemani. Uh, before we begin the master class, I would request the audience to note that any questions that you might have can be typed and posted in the comment section. At the end of the session, the speaker will answer them one by one. Over to you, Dr. Nemani. Thank you, Shristiji. Thank you for the <clears throat> nice introduction. And I wanted to thank you, uh, Supraza Ramagaru, as well as Naranjan Babagaru, for inviting me to speak today. Also, on the great occasion of Dr. B. V. Ramas Jayanti. It's a great honor to be talking to all of you today. Again, uh, Jyotish is a vast, like a, a ocean. I think uh, what I'm understanding, I'm kind of sharing it so that further research can be done to enhance our knowledge base from where we are today. So with that note, possibly I'll take uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes and I have some good examples to share with you. Uh, we'll talk about principles today and also some example charts that the time is not sufficient probably i'll be sharing these slides you can go to my website i'll be sharing that also soon you will see and download these slides as at your convenience so my request is don't worry about taking notes or don't worry about uh, taking screenshots anything like that because everything will be available for you give your full attention multitasking possibly not a good idea because something uh, very interestingly uh, spirituality of jyotish that's what the topic today so with that note, uh, with your permission, Sushtiji, can I sh share my presentation slides? Yes, please. Please go ahead. Okay, Sushtiji, can you see my screen? <clears throat> okay, so today's topic is metamorphosis and how to analyze spiritual transformation using secrets of Vedic astrology. Um, Today is October 1st, 2022, and 6 p.m. IST and 5 p.m. USA. As you can see, uh, my website and my email address, please connect with me if you have any questions on this topic of today's discussion. So before I go and share what I thought today with you, I wanted to offer my pronouns to my Jyotish Acharyas, Vayamakura Krishni Ajgaru, Ramdas Ravagaru, Sanjay Radji, R.G. Ravagaru, Swami Omkarji, Dakshina Murtiji, Madhubhava Prakya, and of course, Dr. B. Rama. So with that, we'll just go for a little prayer, then we'll go from there. <clears throat> Om Gam Ganapadaye Namaha Om Gurave Namaha Om Gurave Namaha Om Gurave Namaha Om Suryaya Namaha Hare Rama Krishna, Om Sri Namaha, Om Sri Namaha, Om Sri Namaha. With permissions for my teachers, um, the knowledge what I'm going to share today and in the before and coming days all came from these Acharyas to me. All the credit goes to goes to them. 
and just a pipe in between. Particularly, I want to offer my uh, pronouns to Madhuba Bugadu because he gave lots of good pointers for today's topic. Sir, this is your words in my <laughs> presentation board today. Lots of good research was done. Thank you for your pointers, Madhuba Bugadu. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, can you please go to the presentation mode in the top display settings? Yes. Yeah, swap to presentation. And below there is a hide button. You can just click on that. OK, so shall I start from the beginning? Enough, enough. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You can continue from here. You can click on hide. Yeah, continue. <clears throat> so these are my art choices, as mentioned before. Um, I want to offer my pronouns to Venkot Krishna Yaji Garu, Ram Dasara Garu, Sanjay Ji, and also Arji Rao Garu, Swami Omkar Ji, Dakshina Murtram Swami Garu, Madhubhav Garu, and Dr. B. Raman one more time. So these are the these are the acharyas gave me immense amount of knowledge to me, and uh, without their blessings, possibly I cannot even speak today. So thank you, all of you acharyas. Particularly today, the topic I'm going to share is coming directly from Madhubhav Garu. He gave immense amount of pointers to me for this particular topic, which is very dear to my heart, which I've been studying for the last couple of years. I'll be sharing with you today. So with that note. The topics today, uh, agenda is pretty simple. I'll talk about some principles, and uh, then the basis on that, I have taken some example charts. Um, and then we'll go into the detailed discussions. Uh, then we'll go into the Q&A at a later point of time. The, the topic, when I give the description of these each chart, you'll see lots of intricacies of Jyotish. So what I, want to, I wanted to request all of you who are watching this is, you know, we all have some foundation knowledge to advanced knowledge. You may see some pointers which may be slightly different than what you must have learned before or understand before. So do not put any filters right now. Just keep it open, then go back and reconcile. Possibly you'll find it a little bit more interesting that way, right? So with that, just let's go into the topic. As we all know, <clears throat> Maharishi Jaimini has given some fantastic principles uh, saying that, you know, uh, what are the placement of Ketu in destiny of spiritual people? For example, if Ketu is placed in 12th house from Kara Kamsha Lagna or Lagnamsha, or Ketu is strongly influencing the 12th by Rashidristi, then we can say the spiritually inclined person can potentially go to attain moksha as well. Similarly, the possibilities of moksha is even stronger if Ketu aspects such positions from a sattvic watery science, which is basically Pisces and Cancer. So those are the pointers we already know, which Germany Maharshi has given. And also he extended these a little bit more, possibly I'll uh, quickly we'll run through this. You can read this later on. As I highlighted the third house, the benefic aspect from Germany Maharshi said third, sixth from Arudhalagna, or third or eighth from Atmakarika planet is also important for spiritual inclination uh, towards this as well. Now, having said that, Let's talk about a little bit on foundations on the Upachai houses. We all know 3, 6, uh, 10, and 11. So these are the Upachai houses. For this particular topic today, I'm taking third house because we all know third house is an action initiative and also talking about various actions need for growth because Upachai itself is a growth uh, opportunity for us. And also looking at the how do we perform the actions to alter the karma or enhance the karma, right? So that's what the third house will be taking for today's uh, discussion today. And also, as you all know, uh, remember we were taught by our acharyas when we get up in the morning, we should actually take, look at our palms together and pray, saying that, Karagre vasate lakshmihi karamadhye saraswati so this is one of the powerful uh, japams, which I think we all should do being in astrologers and also being common men as well. So the, if you look at this kara, the kara is the hand, kar. So I think that's what I'm taking into consideration today. And we progress slowly. What it does mean by kara with the karma. Uh, so if you go to the next one, I think we all know this is the Kalapurusha Chakra. Just kind of reiterating uh, the signs, mobile, uh, fixed as well as dual signs, and the elements of the Panchatattvas there, and also directions. We'll be using this. So maybe take a, a snapshot of this particular slide. 
may be useful for our discussion, this and a couple more. The focus, as I said today, is going to be third house. This is the key house, which will indicate whether the native can alter the karma or not. Just the key, third house. And fourth house is the way we are performing the karma, but the, the, the chittam we call, right? Fourth house is chittam. And also 10th house, which is opposite to the fourth house, right? Which talks about the karma balance. How much is the balance there? Can I alter the karma? Where am I performing location of this? Which area of my life I'm performing the karma? These are the indicators. Very important topics to be considered today. Most importantly, as we all know, Saturn is the karma, karma karaka. So Saturn aspect on the above, which means third house, fourth house, 10th house, their lords, plus moon, and Lagna are very important. Just keep in mind. Saturn aspecting the more uh, than the importance of the altering karma as well as spirituality will progress. So this is a key factor probably we'll be using this uh, in coming, uh, coming uh, slides as well. Now, the foundationally, um, we actually can classify or categorize them into five different categories of human beings, right? That's why in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, we all taken birth into this planet Earth because planet Earth is nothing but Mrityu Loka. Means the, the truth is that the person takes a birth means it has to go. We have to go. So before in this between the processes, we have to perform certain karmas to fulfill the pending activities as well. In order to do that, we have a first stage. In Telugu, we call Sama and Yudu. In, a, in, a, in a English, maybe we can say common man or common woman. Again, don't get into the nitty gritties of the man or women. I'll be calling as a common man. Just take it as more women as well for gender space, not very specific gender. So what the description, which I'm thinking is, who experiences the karma, continues his suffering and perform the additional karma with no knowledge or understanding about the karma and how this karma can be altered. They got no idea, just they keep performing. So this particular category or classification is called Samanya, common man. The second category is sadhaka. Sadhaka is a he or she knows there is a karma, there's a destiny, and he or she understands the karma can be altered, and they will make the first attempt to alter their own karma. The attempt is the differentiator. Samanyudu, sadhakudu, or common man to sadhaka. The next level is going to be siddha. Siddhudu, we call it Telugu. So he or she learns and understands the prakriti, the nature, and practices to learn the alter of the karma with her own efforts, right? Which means the escalation or the maybe elevation from the previous category to here is this person understands it and try to perform with own efforts to understand the nature, the prakriti. And that is the called siddha, which means they're connected to siddhattu. We'll talk about in uh, in a couple of minutes. Then the next category is called Jivan Mukta. So nature knows. Now there's a there's a deflection now. The nature, Prakriti knows that this person is important who has taken the birth on this planet Earth. And without his own efforts, the Prakriti comes and helps 50%, uh, alter his own karma. So which means the Prakriti is helping this person for the Jivan Mukta state person is to do the altering the karmas. So he or she comes with the renum. Renum is like a debt uh, with the Panchabhutas. Once done, he or she will be an emancipated. And uh, the fundamental thing which I've observed uh, from my uh, meditation as well as understanding these uh, philosophical, uh, spiritual things is when there is a debt with Panchabhutas, when somebody stands, there is a shadow in the sunlight, right? That's a foundation thing. Next category is called Paramukta or called Paramukta do who is 100% synchronized with Prakriti and can alter the other, other's karma as well. No renom, no debts of Prachabhutas. Means when they when the person stands, the, the, we'll talk about some examples, you don't see the shadow, which means there is no renom or debts with the Prachabhutas, which is basically the uh, important thing to understand. Again, you need to do a lot more research on this. I think I, I'm showing you in a couple of minutes various uh, charts, which we know these are the very important spiritual uh, progressed uh, souls in this planet Earth. Anyhow, but now coming back to the point is everyone comes with a renom to this planet Earth. That, that's what I said in the beginning. We all came with a credit card, right? So that's what the foundation. So keep this slide eight, uh, slide number eight, slide number nine. And also this important one is 
I'm trying to map these chakras, what we have, and also these categories, which talked about five categories, now mapping them into uh, zodiacal sign Rasis from the uh, uh, Kalapusha chakra point of view. And also I think Yantra's colors, maybe we'll not talk about this uh, some other day. So just keep as a reference. If you look at the Muladhara chakra, it's basically Saman Yudu, Samanya, they'll be operating at, uh, uh, at um, you know, I would say possibly Dhanush, Makara, and Kumbharashis, right? Those are the three Rashis, it will be operating that level, the common man, Saman Yudu. Then the Swadhisthana Chakra is actually deflecting between Saman Yudu to Sadhaka. There's a elevation process, focus on the Scorpio, the natural zodiac of eighth house of Rahasya, the, the uh, the, the deep digging deeper research kind of activities and those kind of things. The next chakra is going to be Manipura, where the sadhaka is full-fledged established at that level, which operates at a, a Tula Rashi and Kanya Rashi, right? Then Anahata chakra is the next level where the, the, the individual is now moving and de deflecting between sadhaka to siddha state. Sadhaka, that's why you see the two highlighted, the red color means progressing towards there, and the Rashi's represents our Simha to uh, Karkataka, Leo and Cancer, right? Then the next one is going to be Vishuddhi, which is basically pure Siddha Tattvam. And the operates at a, at a Mithula Rashi or Gemini. And going to the next is Agnya Chakra, which is Siddha and Jivan Mukta. This is where the deflection takes place in between, which is basically the, uh, the Taurus, which is basically Vrishabha Rashi. And finally, the Shahastrana Chakra, which is a Jivan Mukta to Paramukta state, where this is operated at a Menorashi to Kumbharashi. So these are the, uh, the mappings which I could possibly think, uh, then possibly we'll take some examples to put all these pieces together. Again, we need to do a lot more research to uh, see whether this is working for many other charts, which we know. So that's kind of a topic for today. Now, before we go, I want to give a couple more pointers. When we take a birth, um, the spiritually inclined people or common man to uh, Jivan Mukta, Paramukta state, we all have a base position, our uh, you know, chakras. Then we started there, this is our base position. We operate today at a certain current position. So base level, current position, and the Kundalini, as we all know, chakras actually go into the elastic mode. They just don't stay there. They just go elastic, has got lots of magnetic properties. So that is how they operate. They won't stay in one place. They continuously move it on to attain this, come back. Uh, the, those, those kind of pointers maybe you need to keep in mind. Particularly, if you have a second, take a snapshot of this particular uh, slide because we'll be using this quite often. So it'll be helpful for you to see go forward. So with that note, uh, let me talk about <clears throat> metamorphosis. Remember, we all studied in the earlier school, uh, maybe middle school level. What is metamorphosis? Metamorphosis is the idea of how this uh, eggs being formed from eggs to caterpillar, the caterpillar to uh, cocoon and cocoon to butterfly. The physical manifestation has got changed. So this was a basic idea behind this uh, topic of research today presentation, how a human being can start from a, a point A to point B to point C, point D, wherever they are today. So this is nothing but a transformation from a spirituality angle, from a Vedic astrology point of view. So I'm taking this as a metamorphosis as a foundation for this conceptual approach. And doing that, if you look at that, how the caterpillar is actually getting the cocoon, a stage of meditation, a stage of tapasya, and finally coming into butterfly. Similarly, as you can see, uh, the known uh, Ramana Maharshi, we all know him, when he was a young boy, like a Venkata Raman, how he became Ramana Maharshi, right? What are the things, what are the indications which we have some, uh, uh, the principles, we'll, we'll check into those activities. Same as with the Vivekananda Swami as well. Young, young man became a, a, you know, Vivekananda Swami. And similarly, we have also some examples I'll be sharing today. Young boy, Yogananda Paramahamsa, uh, Yogananda as well, and also uh, looking at Ramanuja Chaya. Remember, he got the mantra diksha when he was young. He said, well, this mantra has to be given to the whole universe. He just went up to the temple and shouting and said, Om Namo Narayanaya. So I think those are the foundations which I wanted to prepare 
for the journey for the next uh, 20, 30 minutes. So the, there are a lot of other charts possibly, and uh, we'll see how best we can get there. If not, I'll be sharing these slides, spend some time uh, and, and understand this, Aurobindo as well as Maharshi as well. So this is some examples for today. So having said that, let's take some practical examples. The first one is Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, right? So Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, as we all know, he was a, a temple priest and he's a, a great soul and the highest achievement of the spiritual inclinations towards emancipation, enlightened person, how, right? So if you look at the chart, Rashi is Kumbha, sun is in the Lagna, indicates Agnya Chakra, right? Third eye. So also sun with Mercury and Kumbha indicates a person born with the Jnana Netra open. Remember, I'm, I'm giving lots of pointers today. Uh, if you're familiar with this deeper Jyotish principles, you already know Agnya Chakra is third eye, and sun in Mercury Kumbha indicates a person with the Jnana Netra means the Netra is open uh, for this particular person. So make a note. Uh, probably you, you'll see these will be helpful as we progress, right? And also, if you look at the next pointer, Kumbha is very prominent. Why I'm saying prominent here? Look at all these three planets in the Erashi, which indicates its prominence and telling that, hey, look at me, look at me, Kumbha Rashi, in Ram Krishna Parahamsa's house. So he started the journey at Sahasrara Chakram. Remember, I told you slide number 10. If you see that he started the journey at uh, Sahasrara, Moon is in Saturn's Rashi of Aquarius, which is Kumbha Rashi. Hence, there is a connection between Saturn and Moon. Who is Saturn? Saturn is Kali and Moon is Ma. So he's a sadhaka of Kali Ma, right? So you, you got to bring all these intricacies of Jyotish to combine together uh, to, see the, the, to see the deeper meaning of spirituality in any chart. Next one. Kumbha is very prominent of Kundalini as well. In Telugu, we call Kunda, which is nothing but a part. So by at the time of birth, he came by beating this Kundalini Shakti because Kumbha is so prominent. That, and he said, I'm here to ad advance myself to the next level. And also you'll notice uh, three Grahas or Ucha, which is Shukra, Shani, as well as Kuja, which indicates uh, some more uh, great information we, we'll talk about later. Now, going on to a couple more pointers. Remember I said third Lord is Karma, the altering Karma capabilities. If you make a third lot from here is a, is a Kuja, which is exalted in the 12th house. Hence, we'll do that. He will do some exalted karma by leveraging the Kuja is a younger generation, the Shishyas. That's why he got lots of young people. And one of them, I think we'll talk about the next slide, is going to be he kind of embarked that information to use, leverage this exalted third, changing their karmas as well. Kuja also indicates a war and also, you know, valor and, uh, you know, agility and those kind of agnitatva. That's why he's very bold. He was very bold in talking about Shastras, truth about Shastras. He was never hesitant talking about, uh, you know, not, not to worry about, just he was talking truth all the time, right? And also if you look at the other factor, third Lord Mars in Capricorn indicates uh, Chandi Upasana. Because Chandi, what is Kuja? is a blood and Tantra Shastra. That's why he was a great... Uh, master of this Tantra Shastra uh, that was that's also indicated by the third Lord in exalted state in 12th house and also he's a grand master of the universe how do we say he's a grand master of the universe look at this at uh, the Jupiter in the fifth house retrograde and he aspects the moon giving the Gajikesa yoga and also indicating yoga Raja because he's a yogi but he's the king of yogis right that's what it indicates and also sun plus moon which is basically Amavasya Hence, he's the Upasana Devata was Mahakali, right? Kali Devata. Also, next to the Aquarius is uh, Mino Rashi, which is Pisces, where we see um, the, uh, the, the Shukra is exalted. So, which means it confirms that he did a, a three Devata sadhana. So, now you connect this. Mars exalted in 12th house. Lagna has got prominence of Kumbha, Kumbha Rashi and also going to Mino Rashi. So from a spiritual astrology point of view, we need to connect all these Rashis together to understand what the planets are telling us. I think I must have repeated earlier as well, Jyotish like us, we have to have conversation with Grahas. We need to talk to Sambhashana with the Grahas. Then they, they'll tell you, hey, uh, Jyotisha, you're looking at this chart. This is what we are. This is where we are. I think that level of Jyotish possibly we need to go into. So they, they'll tell you what exactly they are. Now, going further, uh, 
now we talked about 10th house, uh, the karma, right? So 10th house is a karma and Ketu placement there indicates the column, the time. Ketu indicates that. So he will become a master of controlling the column. Why? Because Ketu is in 10th house. 10th Lord Mars is in 12th house indicate that he will keep the karma in a bhakti stana because the 12th house is bhakti as well. So you take the karma into bhakti for 12th house. That's how we can see how great deeper bhakti, uh, bhakta of Mahakali as well. Now, coming to the 11th house Lord, Jupiter, we know that Ju Jupiter is a Dhanagaraga, he's in Gemini, not a very friendly sign, and Jupiter is aspecting the 11th house by, by his drishti, and he has taken the strength from this weakness and overcoming the money, interest, and desires. When the Dhanagaraga is not placed very well, naturally we will not have uh, dhana, uh, the, the, the resources point of view, but Ramakrishna Paramahamsa Garu has actually transformed, taken this disadvantage into advantage because of this combination which I explained before. So if you remember the, the example when somebody actually puts a uh, puts a, some money on his bed and he just gets up and says, what is this fire? Because he just does not have the inclination towards the dhana, dhana karga, Jupiter is actually looking this kind of aspects as well. Now, going on to some more pointers, um, Buddha, the Mercury is Panchendriya Karaka, right? That's what we have, Jyotish. So, Buddha is placed in Lagna, indicates Jnana. Surya and Chandra are the two eyes. And this yoga gives a native with Athindriya Jnana, means the five Indriyas we have, he will get inclination of knowledge beyond these Indriyas, then it becomes Athindriyas, means advanced level. So, beyond the Panchendriyas. So, please. I think if you can meditate on this particular topic, you may see what the eye uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was actually seeing in the Kumbha Rashi. So meditate on this, probably you'll see an eye, which is nothing but mother of Mahakali in my opinion. Again, going back a little bit further down, uh, also just a pointer for you to ponder, when sun is placed in Kendras, then it is possible to activate the third eye under a guru's, uh, under a guru's guidance. If the sun is placed in Lagna itself, I think it's much easier uh, for the native to use the third eye, which means Jnana Netra, basically. So think on those lines, probably you'll see much more deeper. So I think, you know, this is a, a deeper, we can go further down, but I wanted to give these pointers to you for today. Then we'll move on to a couple more charts. I'll be taking different angles of spiritual astrology, Vedic astrology secrets from this, so you can actually combine as you progress and uh, leverage for continued research on this topic as well. With this, I'll go on to the next one, uh, Swami Vivekananda. If you look at his Lagna is Sagittarius, it's Lord Jupiter indicates the third eye. I put in bar brackets three. Think about it. What, why did I say three? Because this is a homework for all of you, because there would be always a homework in these sessions, because that's how I want you to churn these concepts and apply your own uh, research findings and see what that means. Are we really going in the right direction to find some more deeper meanings of the Jyotish, right? Sun is in Lagna pointing to Moladhara Chakra. If you remember the slide number 10. And also, if you look at the Lalita Sahasranamam, it says, Sri Agnya Chakra, also Rudra Gandhi Vibhedani. That's exactly what it means. Rudra Gandhi Vibhedani, right? She's inside the Agnya Chakra at the conjunction of the eyebrows. And it cuts the rudras and devotee becomes one with a cosmic consciousness. It means you, know, you open up uh, yourself to the cosmic, the net, the, the vibration system as well. Moving on to a couple of more pointers. As you all know, Dhanush Rasi indicates Sri Rama. And also this Dhanush is a ninth house from the natural zodiac, which represents Guru Stana. So what it in indicates is his guru, Swami Vivekananda's guru, name must be Rama or connected with Rama. As you can see, his guru name was Ramakrishna Paramahamsa that way. So we can see the naming conventions from uh, Jyotish from a, from a different angle. And also, as I said, Saturn was Kali and Moon is Ma. So Kali Ma, and this also indicates he's at a Siddha, Siddha from level of stage. Also, this Saturn aspecting Lagna Lord, who is Saturn is actually as Lagna Lord, which is... Uh, uh, after the Parivartana. Remember, there's a Parivartana between uh, Lagna Lord as well as these things. So also look at the 10th Lord and also 4,000 indicates it will be moving towards Jivan Mukta state. Because if you remember those pointers I gave in the slide number 
eight, I think. So the more connection point, the third Lord, fourth Lord, fourth, tenth house, tenth Lord, moon, as well as sun with the Saturn, then the deeper level, they go into highest level of uh, the categorization, what we have, right? And also at the, at the time of birth, he started Manipura Chakra. Remember, uh, Saturn moons are very prominent in Virgo Rashi, because if you look at it, there are two planets and two houses, Saturn and moon and Venus and Mercury. Why we pick up Saturn moon? Because this is where the Siddhatvam indications are there. Saturn moon always gives a Siddha state. So he's a very prominent uh, Manipura chakra. That's where it is operating at that point of time. And also Lord of Virgo, which is Mercury, where this is operating. So he's a great, strong characteristics of communication abilities. I think we all know how Swami Vivekananda used to communicate. He talked about various lectures because of the Mercury's uh, abilities blessed to him. And also now going to the 10th Lord Mercury is having Parivartana with Saturn indicates he was born to bring Parivartana in many people's life. Look at that. Parivartana is actually bringing, being a guru, being a, a, a spiritually inclined um, a, a soul. He's actually changed a lot of people who followed him uh, to in their lives as well. Moving on to the next one. Um, Surya in Lagna in Dhanush. And it is opposite to Gemini sign, which is west direction. So it indicates that he, because also aspected by, remember Saturn moon, I talked about Siddhatvam. So he's a Siddha looking at Gemini. Uh, the, the aspect of a Saturn moon with the Rashi Dushti there indicates he traveled to extensively to west to promote the ideas, give the knowledge base to the other part of the world as well, right? And also 10th Lord Mercury having Parivartana, which I talked about before, He'll continue the journey towards Jivan Mukta state. Hence, he has completed his life at a very young age. Remember, they came here, finished this. They got to go to the next level. So that is how we can probably see Swami Vivekananda. Again, I think we can take some more deeper insights. But I think maybe I'm restricting for the time because I wanted to show you some more examples, some other spiritual, uh, great spiritual souls as well. <clears throat> Now, taking example of uh, Paramahamsa Yogananda, again, you look at his chart, Moon is in Saturn's house of Capricorn with Lagna Lord's son. And Saturn is aspecting fourth house by third aspect, of course, and also aspecting fourth Lord Mars. And uh, Jupiter's own house of Pisces along with fourth and ninth Lord Mars making this Pisces prominent. Uh, indicates that this native started the journey at Sahasrara Chakra. Remember the what the principle we are trying to apply was where are these prominent grahas in a chart how they're actually mapped from our mapping system which i talked about in slide 10 then we will know and how and where they started the journey from the chakra perspective and also the category shift and how they move because as i said this is an elastic one they're, they're not fixed just like stretches goes back and that's how the paramahansa yogananda was operating it so if you look at the eighth house as you all know, eighth house is for research, gift unexpected. So eighth house gifted house where Jupiter Mars indicates he's a gifted guru. Uh, what else we can say? Eighth house, Jupiter Mars, an unbelievable a gifted guru. For some more pointers, eighth house is also sudden, unexpected. So Jupiter Mars plays the eighth makes him as a gifted yogi and also gifted guru as I was talking about it. I'm adding one more pointer, yogi because gifted yogi is the eighth house with the, such a strong Jupiter Mars in the, in the main Rashi as well. Now, if you look at Chandra and Ravi, which is sun and moon in Capricorn, indicates the eyes, both eyes in Jyotish. And uh, he, had, he has the darshan of Kalima. How? Because it's a perfect example of Guru Anugraham he has got. I think, remember when you're reading his... Um, uh, speech, uh, books, and other materials say Yukteswar Giriyas was Rahiri Mahasaya. He's got a tremendous amount of blessings from his gurus. You can actually see that's actually coming from this Makar Rashi because of the Ravi and Chandra together. And he's actually in the sixth house from the Lagna and also in the Saturn's house uh, placement of um, Makar Rashi as well. Some more pointers. And also you'll notice Lagna is surrounded by. Uh, the chain of philosophy planets. For example, you can say Saturn is a philosopher. Ketu is a sannyasi and philosopher. That's what I think Lagna has got second house, Saturn, then Ketu. There is a gap of one particular sign, which is uh, Scorpio. Then another sign you have Venus and Mercury. 
venus is moksha karaka mercury gnana karaka and sagittarius then you have chandra and surya which is in a, which is in capricorn indicates amavasya which means atma and mind were combined there again and also there's a one gap and the other house is jupiter and mars jupiter is a gnana karaka and also guru kuja is a shishya two planets in pisces so moksha karaka venus is placed in 12th house from chandra lagna also indicates uh, very important prominent things as well as you can see right so I, maybe i'll give a quick pause here to digest this apply these principles and try to understand how the chart is been um, giving the information to us when you're looking for spiritual astrology there's no uh, there's no formulas rather than we need to have that kind of spiritual connection with uh, with the grahas the grahas have to communicate to us then probably you'll see a lot more details uh, in a much more detailed manner having said that third lord sukra uh, venus is actually as we all know so venus gives a very sukshma drishti very detailed eye uh, with mercury jnana in fifth house which is a natural ninth house as we talked before that is why fifth house is a, a an accomplishment a tangible thing which is why his book autobiography of yogi he talked about his journey and conversation into sukshma lokas and also he mentioned very particularly about the hernia lokas right so how this connection of the fifth house third lord with the mercury and venus in fifth house we can actually find all these pointers very very quickly right <clears throat> now if I ask you a question, if I ask you a question, say, how do you know um, Paramahamsa Yogananda? Like most people will say, because I read his book, The Autobiography of Yogi, or I've seen his, uh, you know, other pictures. So look at this, how the, the, his astrological chart is actually revealing that is, if you see the name and fame is the fifth house, and Mercury is a karaka of the book, with Venus in Dhanush Guru makes his known for his world as a, guru by his book the uh, an autobiography of the yogi as well now with that note maybe what i would like to do is uh just a quick pointer so all of you i want to take some time to ask you i've done this for a rashi chart right so maybe take these charts the ones i've shown you before i'll be showing some more uh, take these example charts and take five of them. You don't need to do all the 10 of them or seven of them, whatever you do. But instead of taking a Rashi chart, take Vimshamsa, D20, the Varga Chakra of 20th, that is Vimshamsa, and apply the principles of what we discussed so far and send me your analysis. Uh, my email address is there, raven 100 at gmail.com. And also you can see my website. I have lots of articles. If you're interested in any such articles, let send an email. I'll send you the uh, PDF for that particular article only, uh, my article only. So if you send the analysis with these uh, five example charts, you choose whoever you want to pick up for the D20 chart, Vim Shamsha. The first 28 email replies I get, I'll send you this book, uh, Yogi, Autobiography Yogi, such a fantastic book. If you're inclined towards a spiritual journey with Jyotish, probably this is a good starting point. Um, you can apply, you can reply to me anytime sooner or maybe up to November 17th, I'm thinking, because it gives enough time for people watching today and also in the recording. So send it to me. Again, there's nothing uh, right or wrong. I wanted to see how the principles you could actually see. I want to see how you're actually thinking about these applying this principle going forward as well. That's the basic idea. And that book will be in your mailing box when you send the address as well. So having said that, Let's take uh, another example, Swami Sivananda. I think we all know Swami Sivananda was a medical doctor by profession and worked in Malaysia and then moved to Himalayas, right? So then also uh, Lagna in Cancer itself indicates Himalayan region. That's a, a fam I mean, known Jyotish foundations we know. And also Saturn in Lagna and the dispositor moon is placed in 10th house. There is a parivartana between Chandra and Kuja, Moon and Mars, making Saturn Moon or conjoined or connection. So he's this is making as he's a Siddha, Siddhudu, and he will be moving towards Jivan Mukta state. Right? Think about it. Why I'm saying Jivan Mukta state. Also, Cancer is more prominent in this chart because uh, that's where the three planets are there. The three planets are telling, hey, look at me. This is where my journey started. I'm actually started my journey at Anahada Chakra. 
Uh, then Cancer Lord Moon, also we know from astrologically Kesas, the hair, right? Kesas is in Aries and aspected by Jupiter Rishi, hence the place of Rishi Kesh. Rishi is a Jupiter, Kesh is Moon placed in the Aries. We can immediately say, oh my gosh, this person is going towards a place known as Rishi Kesh. Uh, he was moving towards Sahasrara Chakra because of uh, the placement of Moon in the uh, Aries as well. Also, if you look at the fourth Lord, Venus is being aspected by Saturn, indicates he was moving towards the Jivan Mukta state as well, right? So these are the indications. Again, moving towards means it's like an elastic property. It moves and it doesn't stay there, come back again uh, to take some other uh, births if required. We'll talk about that in a minute. And also, Kuja and Shani in Cancer indicates Shivalingam, right? We have, which is a pretty popular, pretty known Jyotish uh, foundation we know. And also, interestingly, Pushumi nakshatra indicates the Shiva Puja nakshatra, right? That's what the nakshatra indicates about it. So in this native, if you look at his uh, horoscope, you will see must have at least one graha, which is connected to the Saturn in Pushumi nakshatra, right? So in this case, we have in this, in Lagna, Kuja and Mars are together, as you can see, along with Rahu, but both Kuja as well as Saturn in Pushumi nakshatra, means the Shiva Puja, right? The deep inclination towards Shiva. Was indicated there as well and also um sun and mercury conjoined second house indicates he's a great guy three devi upasaka right which is very clear it's telling that as, as anytime you see sun is a guy three indications as well right so anyhow that's how i want to give a quick uh, pointers from uh, swami shivananda again we can do a lot more but as i said i want to give some diversified uh, a chart examples so that you can see various principles as we progress then Maharshi um, Aurobindo Ghosh. So if you look at his chart, Saturn and Moon are together indicates again Siddha state. And also the time of birth, he started the Muladhara Chakra and the Saturn and Moon are very prominent in Dhanush Rashi, right? So that's where the journey started. And 10th Lord Mars in Lagna indicates he will continue the journey towards Siddhattum. Then also, if you look at some other pointers, Muladhar Chakra indicates he was born in a rich family with the lands, properties. That's what the Muladhar Chakra indicates, right? Then he went to foreign land and he learned from higher studies. If you look at the fifth house, in Ketu indicates he's a yogic and philosophical thinking person. That's why he brought the secrets. Why secrets? Because uh, the Vrishikarashi, Scorpio, is a natural eighth house. That's why the research, the, the secrets has to be there. So he gave the sannyasa yoga and sannyasa siddhantas to the world. That's what is a uh, contribution, uh, this great soul. And also third Lord Mercury is with the sun, which is a mandalas, visva shakti, the, the universal knowledge base, and also Venus, the female energy. So he worshiped with these to get energy from a cosmos, mandalas, and converse with the devatas, the sambhashana, the, the communication, talking to devatas, evolved to a higher plane as well. That's what I think. Maharshi Arvindo. Uh, <clears throat> maybe we'll take one or two more examples, then we'll uh, go for questions answer session. Then the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, uh, when he was graduate student, he actually jumped up from a wall to see his potential guru, which is Brahmananda Saraswati. All right? That's what we all I read from the uh, his his material, the books and other things. And also he understood the ancient scriptures and gave the knowledge of Patanjali. Yoga Sutras to the world in a form which we all can understand, the 21st century people like me, like you, right? So if you look at, he's the he's also known as, he's the guru of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Deepak Chopra, Paramaguru of Jagu Vasudev, Sadhguru. I mean, that's his background. Now from a spiritual astrology standpoint, Sagittarius is prominent. Why? Because remember, there are three planets and telling, hey, look at me, I'm here, right? And also Rahu with Sun indicates he's a Brahma Jnana Veta, right? Rahu and uh, Sun in Sagittarius, Dhanush Rashi. That's also another indication. When he started his journey with Moladhara Chakra, because Sagittarius is Moladhara Chakra, right? Then Saturn aspecting Lagna, Saturn is in Moon's Rashi, Saturn is placed in natural fourth house, aspecting 10th house, indicating Siddha. Confirmed as per the principles what we have, the indications. And also third Lord Jupiter is in Aries indicates he came with the blessings of his guru, Jupiter, and will reach to Sahastra Chakra because Jupiter is placed in Aries uh, Rashi, which is Mesha Rashi, right? So with that, again, just to some of these pointers, we can go a little deeper as we talked about 
uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and Vivekananda. So bring those pointers into this chart so you can you can take a little bit more deeper uh, sites of the spiritual inclinations as well. With that, let's take another example, a diversified Mother Teresa, right? The prominent Rashi is Virgo and Jupiter and Mercury together and Mercury is exalted. You may ask me why Saturn moon also there are there and the Mars, also, Mars as well as uh, uh, Sun is also there. Why we're taking this? Because the exaltation position, Mercury is telling that I'm here, even though there are two, two planets elsewhere, this is what the prominent is. So Virgo, as you know, Kanya indicates Kanya. So basically she started as a nurse uh, in, the, in, this particular, in this particular life. Then Saturn and Moon are conjoined together, giving a Siddha Yoga, which we already talked about before. I think we all know Vatican did her canonization, giving the sainthood, which is called Siddhattam. I think somewhere, some years ago as well, this confirms that the Saturn Moon combination is confirming that piece. And also Ketu is close to the Lagna indicates, close to the Moksha. And also Ketu indicates Christianity as well. So that's what this, her background and uh, the confirmation of Jyotish principles, what we've seen so far. And also Saturn and Moon. Again, Saturn, Kali and Ma, Kali Ma, maybe in Christianity, they maybe she must have seen uh, maybe Mary Mother, Mary Ma in Aries. So this indicates Mother Teresa have seen the darshan of Mother, uh, just like Vivekananda, just like uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa as well. She has started her journey at Manipur Chakra because, as you said, that's where the, uh, the, the Jupiter Mercury and Mercury exaltation state indicates. And also third Lord Saturn is in Aries indicates she operated at Sahasrara Chakram. Um, then also we can say, uh, I mean, we can go a little deeper. Maybe I will take one more example and, uh, and stop here uh, so that we have enough time for the Q&A. So now if you look at the Swami Chandrasekhar and the Swami, the Paramaguru or Paramacharya of uh, Shankara, Shankara uh, Parampara. So by third aspect, Saturn is aspecting 4,000, Moon is placed in it. So that indicates the Sun and Moon. And so Sign Taurus is prominent. There are three planets in it and also Jupiter and Venus having Parivartana, uh, making this sign more stronger. Hence we started a journey at Agnya Chakra level in the Siddha state of moving towards Jivan Mukta as well. Right. Then a couple more pointers. Um, third Lord Venus will be in Taurus after Parivartana makes his. He can actually alter other his own karma as well as capable of altering others' karma as well. So that is the key indicator here. And also third Lord Venus, who is uh, exalted and with Rahu, which is Rudra, in the eighth house. Hence, he can see, he has seen the Lord Shiva secretly in eighth house in the form of Nataraja. Why Nataraja? You can see that Pisces is a natural 12th house, also indicates foot. The Bhagawan's foot is basically in the form of Nataraja. That's what I think uh, he has seen the darshan of Lord Shiva. Maybe we'll take one more, then we'll uh, stop here. Ramana Jajaya. So Saturn aspect in moon by seventh aspect indicates a Siddha state. And also third Lord Mercury along with fourth Lord Venus indicating the started journey of the Sahastra Chakra directly at that level. And also um, Lagna Lord Moon and 12th house indicates that he has advocated a philosophy known as Visista Dvaita, right? That's very interesting. Lagna Lord Moon, I put in the bracket number two, earlier I said Jupiter three, homework for you. Why I use these numbers? Think about this and write to me because that's a good indication to how we use the numerical systems of Vedic astrology as well into the process. Visista Dvaita is the one actually indicated here. Ah, finally, I think we will take Bhagawan Raman Maharshi, then we'll stop there. Saturn is aspect in both Lagna and 10th house and placed in 4th house, which is connecting all the three main principles. And also third Lord Saturn is placed in 4th and having Parivartana with Lagna and 4th Lord Jupiter as well. So Sagittarius Dhanushras is prominent as there are planets in it. Also Rahu with Sun indicates he's a Brahmagyanaveta straight away, right? So, and also he has started his journey at Muladhara Chakra, third Lord Saturn Pisces, hence he has continued his journey towards Jivan Mukta state, Shastra Chakra is getting into that state. So anyhow, I'll stop here uh, with these kind of examples and pointers. Maybe we'll uh, take some questions and see how best we can take these pointers for your further study and research, and we'll go from there. So.
Perfect. My stopwatch also indicated that I should stop here. <laughs> okay, with that note, Shristiji. Thank you, Dr. Nimani. Uh, that was a really insightful class. Uh, like you mentioned, we'll now move on to the question and answer session. Uh, Dr. Nimani, the questions will come up on the screen. Uh, I'd request you to kindly read it out aloud for the benefit of everyone and then answer them. <clears throat> Surely. <clears throat> Okay, I see a question from Raja Rangaru. <clears throat> uh, without having a guru, how to know what is our goal of this birth time? Very good question. I think uh, in my opinion, we need to have a teacher. We need to have a guru, right? So the way I started my journey was, uh, the way I also understood later on was, guru will come to you uh, on a defined time. So what we need to do is praying to your devata, whoever you stay devata, devata you believe, to get connected with your guru. That's a foundation we need to do. There are various foundational japa mantras uh, we all have in the Jyotish. Like, uh, you know, there are four foundational Jyotish mantras in order to seek the guru's blessing, in order to get connected to the guru or show mantras. Om Gurave Namaha, the first house. Om uh, Paramagurave Namaha, right? Second house is, that is basically fourth house. Um, Paratpar Gurave Namaha is the seventh house. And Parameshti Gurave Namaha is tenth house. These are the four Kendras. So choose those. And uh, possibly when you do these four mantras in a, a mandala of 48 days, possibly you'll, you'll get connected with your Guru because Guru's blessings are more important. I don't think uh, we'll get to the details of Jyotish or any Vedanga Vidya uh, without Guru's blessings. Possibly that may be helpful for you. Uh, Vijay Bhaskar was asking, uh, Guruji, more planets in the Navamsha Lagna means more born abilities, even malefics, example, Saturn born, hard worker, Kate born, spiritual, malefics in DNA makes one unfortunate, more talent, punishment. Um, okay, so question was not complete. I think your points are very valid. Uh, the Dharmamsha, which we call Navamsha, that is why it is called the ninth division of the zodiac. It talks about more born abilities. Uh, so those are the important. Again, we need to take in a negative point of view from Saturn makes a hard work. Why? Because in order to fulfill the karma, maybe they need to take some extra extra hard work, which we think in a physical formation is a hard work, but they're actually burning the karma to repay the debt. So that's how I probably look into this. Maybe uh, the, 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 the details, we need to see much more deeper. Okay, use and vision. How does this concept fit with the idea of free will? Also, why people with the liberal agna are the ones bringing big changes into the world? Idea of fairness, justice, look at leaders with the liberal agna. Fantastic question. Remember, we started the discussion today with Upachaya houses, which is 3, 6, 10, and 11, that's nothing but free will, right? So then we picked up one particular third house, prominent, because that is where they altering the free will, using the free will to alter the karma. And also 10th house we used, part of the Upachaya house as well, which is also free will, the karma sthana. So definitely we all put all these pieces together. Maybe look at this one more time, probably understand how we have leveraged these free will concepts through the Upachaya houses given by Parashar Maharshi. Srini Y, uh, sir, can we apply this principle to Moon Lagna chart as well? I think, you know, we could apply to any chart provided, look at those principles laid down and see how many of them connected. The more connected with those uh, principles given uh, so far, then you're getting that that level in the sense the the touch points, the more touch points, the inclination towards spiritual transformation is possible. So it's not necessary moon lagna or Saturn lagna, doesn't matter, but look at these principles in totality. That's what probably you can get seen was good. Um, funny Rama Sharmagaru, Guruji, how to understand uh, Paripuraja Yoga in modern times? Yeah, this is a great question again. See, looking at this, if you, if you look at the Parivraja means, you know what, basically 
leaving all these materialistic activities towards going towards the spiritual journey, right? So the modern times, if you look at, there are there are a lot of rishis. Uh, they do not have an inclination towards materialistic angles. I think uh, there are some good principles in yogas we have uh, in, the, in, the, in the Vedic Jyotish. So taking those into consideration, then putting these principles into uh, combining these together, possibly you will see whether this person is as a as illusionary um, yoga, a yogi, or maybe inside is truly a yogi. We can actually find out that as well. Applying these together, possibly can find out. Parivraja yoga is definitely we can see from many charts. If you look at all these uh, charts, examples are given, so you can probably stitch all this together as well. <clears throat> okay, hit heart. Thank you. Uh, please, can you explain the effects of debilitated son and uh, any remedies? As I think I might have this. Sorry, I'm a, a novice. I think my son is in Swati. First pause are nine degrees. <laughs> I think that this is going to be very specific to you. Um, so maybe I think it's possibly anything about debilitation. I'll give a very high level general concept. Debilitation is nothing wrong, which means we need to. to uh, do some more extra work. It's not easy to get the desired results. Uh, the extra additional efforts are required. That's where the, the, when the graha comes into a chart as a nicha stiti, nicha means, hey, I need some more extra work. Uh, you, want, I want you to make extra work. That's what it is indicating. Again, we need to take into a totality of the horoscope. Uh, just consider that way for now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Nimani. Uh, we are done with the questions for the session. Uh, thank you once again for this excellent masterclass and all your insights on all the questions that uh, you know our audiences had. Um, before we end today's session, I would like to take this opportunity to inform the audience that the next masterclass session is on Sunday. That is the 2nd of October, 2022. The class will be uh, held by Dr. Lynn Boots, and she'll be teaching us about Raja Yoga and Political Rise. See you again there. Also, um, if you'd like to stay informed about the masterclasses and similar sessions by the foundation, we encourage you to visit our website, www.rrrf.in, or join our Telegram channel. Namaste. Thank you, Sushtiji. Thanks for your help. And also, Grish, in the background, technology background, thank you for help as well. Again, thank you all for listening to me today. Bye for now.